Hi, I'm Pete Marin with Airbrush Events. You're watching one of 13 videos that I created on how I airbrush caps at events. Now, these videos were really created for my team, so you'll notice the language is directed towards them, but I wanted to share it with you and the rest of the internet. So please comment, like, and subscribe, and feel free to use the designs. Okay, let's do design number 11. 11, I'm gonna do a name and I'm gonna do a city skyline, okay? City skyline is gonna intentionally wrap around the top. The name has to go right at the bottom, right at the bottom, okay? To make this design work. So let's start with Jackson, that's the name. Okay. Again, if I was gonna plan, I did this because I, I've been doing it for 30 years and I don't have to think about it anymore, but it, I would still be well served if I just took three seconds and said, okay, how many letters in the name? What's the middle letter? In this case, it's K. So K should be right in the middle of the hat. I have three on this side and three on this side. And then you can kind of gauge how big your letters should be so you don't run out of room. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna do what's called a tight wrap. I went through this in an earlier video. I really want to stick as close to the letter. Well, maybe not as close to the letter, but equal distance away from the letter, but follow all the contours. I think following the contours is important. It looks less sloppy, more intentional. And sometimes there's not even space to do the bottom part. And that's okay. If you leave it out completely, it's acceptable because they know it's right at the bottom. If this was a white hat, in theory, you could paint right over that seam. Now, what I'm going to do is call, I'm just going to draw the earth. And the earth has a curve to it, like a dome shape. This design is supposed to mimic what it would look like to look through a fisheye lens so that the Earth's um, horizon looks curved and everything kind of pops out in the middle at you but fades away uh, on the ends. All right, so that's my horizon line. I'm just gonna fill it in. I say fill it in. I, I can just literally kind of saturate everything with color here and carefully outline it. For a quick way, I like to use fades. So I'm gonna start with a hard edge on the top. I'm gonna to fade down, and I will intentionally go over some of those letters, but so lightly that it won't matter. Kind of like that. So it took me less than half the time. Still looks good. Still looks intentional and neat. As long as your fades are consistent and neat, you can get away with coloring things a lot faster that way. And they tend to look better. Okay, I'm gonna draw my middle building first and it's gonna go all the way up to here. So I gotta position my hat downward a little bit and compromise between you know having to paint in this awkward area and having to paint in this awkward area. And I'm gonna to commit to a line going from the bottom up, bottom up. It's gonna, again, we're looking at a fisheye lens, so it's gonna be, building is gonna look bigger at the top than it will at the bottom. It's gonna have that kind of angle to it. I'll show you what I mean. So in other words, the lines are not parallel. And then I might even do a, do a little bit of a dome shape on the top, and then actually draw a, a, a dome, because that's just what the building looks like, and put a little spire at the top. Put a fade in that dome, fill it in. Now I'm gonna draw the other buildings in a similar manner, but these are gonna be tilted off to the side even more. One, two, three. One, two, three. Draw a smaller one here, smaller one here. It's okay that I did this, it's a mistake, but I will cover it up. Now here I'm gonna draw an angle to the building. All 
All right, so those buildings look three-dimensional now. I'm going to fill in this side of the building flat. Fill it in completely saturated. I'm going to get this little one too. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to use dagger strokes. Hard black on the bottom, fade up. Looks like this. It's like a faded dagger stroke. Okay, I like using this method. Gives the buildings a little texture. It's fast. And it's easy to control your overspray. Like I'm not getting overspray on the outside of the buildings. A little bit here, I went too far. That's okay though. All right, so make it dark on the bottom. I might rework my fade here at the bottom, kind of even things out. And that's it. There. Now with the background, as I would do on design number two or design number nine, I'm drawing a faded circle, but I'm only doing a half circle, okay? So I'm back eight to 10 inches away. I start light, I'm using hot blue. And I have to change my hand position on the top. I don't wanna paint at this angle because I'm just gonna get overspray everywhere on the hat. I wanna hit it down and then change my hand position like this. It takes a little bit of practice, but with this, I don't have to be super accurate, right? I'm not drawing a line. I'm doing a fade so I can be a little wobbly and it's okay, but it helps me to practice doing this. The ultimate would be able to do lettering this way. <laughs> I imagine that would be very hard. And I'm actually moving my body around the hat. And it makes doing this a lot easier. I don't have to use my wrist at weird angles if I can just stand on the side that I'm painting. Okay, so I have a nice faded circle, half circle. I'm gonna continue the fade inward. I still wanna leave some white on the design, but I want it to show like there's a fade. Okay, so it's lighter here, darker here, blue. And here, I'm just gonna fade down. So I'm, I'm still back, you know, maybe three to four inches away and I'm heavy with the paint and then, but maybe even too much. I don't want to darken it too much because you know what I said about dark backgrounds, you won't be able to read that lettering. So now I have to be really light. Okay. And then uh, for texture, I could add a couple of lines right to the letters, nice and thin. Just makes it a little interesting. And that is design number 12. Sorry, design number 11. <laughs>